This is the save point. Da -da 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 -da. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to episode 59 of the save point. I am one of your hosts, Alyssa Rosa, and I'm joined today, obviously, by my lovely co-host, Chancleta Mangu, aka Mondo. How you doing today, Mondo? Feels good to be in the winner's circle. <clears throat> yes, yes, but we're not alone. We are not alone today. We brought along our fellow VGA member. You may know him as the Pokemon Don, but around here, we call him Navis. How are you doing today, Ivan? Fantastic. <laughs> as you can see, I am uh, I'm rocking a little bit of uh, gear, Ooh, you know, the yes. Xbox Series X. Uh, I have that. I have my Xbox mini fridge. I decided to put some, you know, some Xbox merch around. You know, I know everything is very Pokemon-esque here, but uh, I am obviously very super excited. I'm excited, I'm excited to be here, as always. We love having you on. Um, we, yeah. we were expecting more more friends, but they, they're all busy, unfortunately. <laughs> so we it's just going to be us three chopping it up. We're going to talk about this news today. I, I want Mondo to lead this because uh, I'm a newly <laughs> owned. I, I'm the newly oh. owned uh, Xbox person. So um, give us some background details on it and then we could jump. We could jump right into it, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh man this is so insane uh i want i want to make sure i put up a I, I get a I get an article so that i don't get any information wrong i don't want to i don't want to get this wrong but unless you've been living under a rock uh at about 8 a.m eastern this morning news hit that microsoft or xbox i don't even know like is it xbox is it microsoft who's technically making the purchase but i think it's microsoft technically microsoft um, yeah and so microsoft is purchasing activision bethesda for 68.7 billion dollars that is billion with mean, a activision B blizzard, blizzard. blizzard. I, oh blizzard. i was saying sorry bethesda oh bethesda they sorry they already own. oh they already own bethesda yeah, they already mm. yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> activision blizzard uh, for $68.7 billion, billions with a B, like the television show, like the insurmountable amount of money that I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. Did you, how, how big does a building have to be to fit $68.7 billion? You know, it's gotta be pretty big. But anyways, mm -hmm. this is massive because this is gonna put games like the Diablo series, Overwatch. I, I, want, I wanna go, I, want, I, don't, I don't wanna say the biggest one yet, Starcraft, Candy Crush, and oh. probably the bigger one other than that, Call of Duty in Xbox's ecosystem. And obviously we don't know what's going to what that means or what's going to come into play, but if the Bethesda acquisition is is to tell us anything, it's that they didn't they didn't buy this so that they could continue putting those games on PlayStation. And so, um, yeah, this is crazy. This is Microsoft's biggest acquisition ever as a company, not even just for the Xbox division. Um, and this is coming a few weeks after Tencent purchased, forget what group of studios they purchased, but that was like $14 billion. And like, that was the biggest acquisition uh, in gaming for all of three weeks. And Microsoft said, hold my motherfucking beer. I got this. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. It, this this shook the earth for me. Robski, shout out to Robski, sent this early in the Slack. I saw this. I'm not gonna joke about it, but wow, almost that that's the kind of shit you almost get into an accident seeing. Like, oh my god. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I immediately jumped into a spaces to talk about it because wow. And yeah, I don't know. It's it's just been that kind of day. It's, it's CNN's talking about it. You know, Rudy's talking about it. This is the kind of news day it is. And so if like if it's big for them. Imagine how big it is just for gamers in general. Um, so this is this is this is industry changing, um, industry shifting, and so just to let you, I'm just to let everybody know, like Activision Blizzard went like just yesterday. It was at for just stock wise, and I was uh, I was actually looking at the market this week, and I was like, oh, you know, it'll probably go up to seventy dollars, you know, but just because of like how it's the trending is going, it went from sixty five dollars to eighty six dollars, almost eighty seven dollars. It jumped in li literally less than like. Oh my gosh like <laughs> yeah well, quite a, bit. a few hours no yeah, quite a bit no, quite a bit no and it's a big deal um this this deal wouldn't be finalized until june of next year 
Um, yeah. So there's still a ways to go on, you know, making this official and that actually, you know, Activision and Blizzard actually becoming a part of uh, uh, Xbox Studios. Is that how that's going to work? Crazy. Um, and obviously another big, uh, you know, because this is a multi-layered thing, um, if you don't know. Blizzard uh, and Activision are currently going through a lot of turmoil and things going on at the company with um, sexual harassment, um, yep. uh, allegations. And I, I don't say allegations as in like, they're not true. No, they are 100% true. Uh, mm -hmm. And they've been sued by the state of California, if I'm not mistaken, and it's, it's a whole yep. big thing. And yep. and so this comes at a, at a very interesting time where uh, Bobby Kozak is like, probably one of the most hated people in the gaming industry right now um, and still don't understand why he has a job there. Um, this news is also coming fresh off of the news that the board over there at Blizzard Activision were in support of Bobby Kozak staying CEO for the indefinite future. And that kind of took people aback. And so this news coming in, uh, a company like Microsoft and Xbox who are very diverse, very inclusive, uh, very progressive and forward driven in their messaging and how they carry themselves and how they approach. Uh, they put an image up of uh, the leadership team and the leadership structure. Uh, like once this deal is done, you know, obviously Phil Spencer at the top and the Sarah Bonds, Matt Boonies and the rest of them uh, in underneath. But it's it is a very healthy mix of men and women in that leadership team, mm -hmm. you know? And like, that is the progressive. And yeah, and of color, right? Uh, a little course. bit, you can put a little bit more color in there, but you know, we're, we're getting there, yeah. we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Give Sarah Bond, give Activision to Sarah Bond and then we'll be good, you know? <laughs> um, but uh, just to finish all the point, a company like that coming in and buying uh, Activision Blizzard in the state that it's in, you know they're gonna shake it up. Bobby Kozak, in my opinion, is gonna be out that door, uh, day one once that deal is done um because mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that they're going to move forward with him as part of the company you just can't you just can't um he he actually this proof that he actually knew what was going on and actively did things to avoid getting people in trouble and and things of that nature that's not that's not mm -hmm. cool so yeah i'm sorry that that was a long explanation but get, but that is the whole situation i feel like we had to really like, get that whole thing because it's so it's so multifaceted this story and this uh mm -hmm. this purchase and stuff but no, um just, yo ivan and even just to add on yeah, yeah. no i was, I was, I was gonna, gonna say you should you should you should go first no you, i would love to hear what you got first <laughs> you guess here um what do you think of course of the purchase of this acquisition yeah, no, this purchase is is huge i mean you know i will always remember like two years ago i was probably one of the first beta testers for game pass Two and, a, two and a half years ago and i told everybody yo game pass is really going to be huge um and then they just started acquiring different companies uh and everything just sort of started to like fall into place uh now to the point now where i mean i don't want to bring up sony right now but also now we're gonna talk we, about you have to yeah we're, and we'll talk about this really uh, but i really wanted to kind of speak you know just wanted to stay on topic of uh a blizzard because you know we talked or rather, we've uh, we've seen Diablo 4, Overwatch 2. They're taking forever. Very turbulent development process. No one really knows what's going on. I think they sent a uh, they had like a YouTube video, maybe a 30 second YouTube video about like how the characters are gonna look like. Super lackluster. Um, you know, their IPs are not doing so well. World of Warcraft are suffering from like its worst back-to-back -back expansions ever. There is so much that Blizzard's just like fumbling the bag on. And for Xbox to just kind of acquire it, like I'm excited to see what World of Warcraft will look like coming to console. I'm almost wanted to stick, and I know we were kind of talking about that uh, via our, our channels, but but like this opens up so much um, for the future of not only for, for, for the Xbox, but also for gaming too. Mm -hmm. And whether or not it will be on Game Pass, I'm assuming it will be on Game Pass. Will that work for mobile? Will that work for PC? Obviously it was gonna work for PC, but it's just, it's just so, it's great to see Xbox really putting, you know, uh, just, 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 just kind of going like full, full throttle on, on these acquisitions being really strategic on the next steps on you know like really like kind of owning the market mm -hmm. uh you know and 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 really can give that accessibility because again what xbox has right now that sony does not have is like end of day with game pass i'm able to play either mope some games grant i'm not gonna say all games you can play everywhere but like that ecosystem is really being built and i'm not necessarily seeing that with playstation mm -hmm. or sony and they're really putting a lot of focus on virtual reality 
which I wish Brandon was here to kind of really speak about because I know he really wanted to speak about virtual reality. But um, no, it's, it's again, it's huge. We all know this is going to be big news. And, and I mean, I'm excited to see like how that starts, uh, you know, shaping up throughout like the next few months. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I, I would have to agree. I recently became a, an owner of an Xbox. So like, obviously, I think this would have like affected me any which way because I know a lot of uh people play you know overwatch world of warcraft those games that are belonging to blizzard but i um on the activision end have been a fan of crash bandicoot since i was a kid and it's kind of just like the ultimate i hate to use this but fuck you um because it started out on playstation and now it will essentially or could essentially just be an exclusive to xbox in the future um, and it wasn't too long ago that Activision acquired Blizzard either. I feel like it was either last year or the year prior. So it's like, it's kind of mind blowing that even though they joint forces, they still couldn't help uh, Blizzard. And also the fact that both companies were just not where they needed to be in that given time, even down to the people who worked for them and specifically the people who are affected by these uh, sexual harassment allegations. Um, and those of those people who have lost their lives as well because it's not just you know that they still live i know one person specifically um lost their life to what was going on there um but it's insane because this is a major move it's like we prior to us talking about this we were saying it's like when disney acquired marvel and star wars and all those things it's just like oh my gosh what more can they do to add to this without becoming a monopoly or being viewed as a monopoly. Um, but I think the most important thing to me as a consumer is that it seems like they really care about the service that they want to bring to Game Pass um, or that they want to make Game Pass be. They essentially want it to be your Netflix and your Hulus and your Disney Pluses, but all in one place. And I, I really do wonder uh, what Sony is going to do because this is this is huge. This is not some, you know, little, oh, we're, we're going to take Discord and like, oh, we're going to take that. I mean, we were not too long ago, Mondo, we were talking about if Square Enix would be the next company that Oof. Uh, Oof. Sony tries to yeah. acquire. And it's like, it would make the most sense. I think now, I don't know about you, but for me, especially after the Ubisoft Plus situation that, <laughs> you know, was, was released, I think Sony... Either they're going to have to bend the knee like everybody's saying and put Game Pass on their system, yeah. or they're going to have to figure out a way to be like, hey, we're still in this game. We want to be here for the long run. Um, here's Spartacus. But we also acquired this, 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 and this. So that's yeah. where I'm at with it. Okay. No, I mean, I, I get where both of y'all are coming from. Um, I'm messy. I just want but, but you go, you go, you go, you go before I get messy. It, I know you're gonna get yeah so like i just want to say like just because everyone's saying like oh we have you know world of warcraft diablo Ooh. overwatch franchise but we have to sort of think spyro tony hawks pro skater, pro skater. And, yeah yeah i got that i got Crash the list bandicoot yeah um, I there's also like guitar hero guitar, guitar hero guitar hero could come back because guitar wow. could come back there's Every also master. uh the remakes of golden eye 007 that's still part of their yes. uh, within their like franchise i mean these are big things that we've grown up with. Yeah. So they could just say, you know, let's just make something here, put exclusively for for Xbox. And I mean, what, yeah, I mean, the the last I think it was the last episode or the episode prior, we talked about GoldenEye. And I think Mondo thought it was interesting because it wasn't through I, I forget what the original platform was for it, but it was through Xbox. And you were kind of like, that's interesting. And now we know why, because <laughs> They, uh, they acquired yeah they acquired it so it, it makes that's a lot just, of sense why they would yeah. be working on it yeah that is interesting yeah i mean uh y'all y'all made some great points um i don't i don't just i don't really disagree with anything y'all said um i'm just Get messy no nah, i'm just yeah, let, listen listen ready. listen i i found i just yo this is kind of crazy because for me in my head the way this is playing out is Yesterday was an interesting day. Like yesterday, the conversation on the internet was, "Oh, are PlayStation days gonna, are PlayStation gonna put uh, their games on PC day one?" And oh, why would they? Why wouldn't they? Why is it a good idea? Why is it a bad idea? And I and I was in Tony's space, and I said that like, 
I don't think the Sony has any reason to do that right now because they make the best games. They have the best selling console. Like they're the market leader. They, they don't have any reason to pivot. Um, even though I do think that they need to get ready and position themselves to pivot because, you know, that could always change. And it's just kind of funny how, yo, not even 24 hours later, man, this is the conversation that we're having now. And we, people could ha have those same spaces today with the same exact titles and they'll be having an entirely different conversation today. And I would too. I, I, I'm like, fuck, this is insane. Um, I'm... I'm just interested to see what PlayStation is going to do. Like, this is on the Xbox side, y'all sell it at all. This is great for Xbox. They're going to get a slew of games. Um, not this year's Call of Duty, but next year's Call of Duty might not be on PlayStation. Maybe. You know? Maybe. Yeah, that's a maybe. Because it doesn't, yeah, because it doesn't finalize. Since it doesn't, people were saying. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't finalize till finalize June. It could also be that one. Yeah. Yeah, so it yeah. could be 2020. If they release them as regularly as they do going forward like xbox as a company um or microsoft then it would probably be 2024 yeah and it would be more mainline games versus like uh vanguard and warzone where they're like free yeah to play. I, so yeah just to be clear mm. i think warzone is gonna stay on the playstation oh, 100%. um and all obviously all the call of duty games that have been on there will be on there too um but yeah call of duty future call of duties in 2023 maybe not 2024, mm -hmm. you can count that shit out. That is not happening. Um, and so that's interesting. Um, Overwatch 2. A lot of people are looking forward to that. That is an Xbox mm -hmm. game now. And like you were saying too, uh, Ivan, Call of Duty League, Overwatch League. Um, those That's big money. And PlayStation knows that too because PlayStation just bought out Evo. Like They understand the significance of that. And, they, and that plays into their community and how... Most of the fighting game community is like on PlayStation or PC, but it it really does feel like it's PlayStation. Like uh, it really is. It's like get sticks and play on PlayStation. Like that's kind of like uh, the fighting game route. Uh, I feel like. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. To your point, Alyssa, I do see PlayStation buying Square Enix now. Like I feel like that's become like a conversation, a hot topic or whatever. But I don't even feel like they're going to do it because they want to. I feel like they're just going to do it because they have to. They have to. And because like they just got to make sure that like some things become untouchable uh mm -hmm. and square enix that just it's seems like the one is square enix like it's, it's been that it since day one i'm yeah. surprised yeah i'm surprised i've been here for 20 something years and they still don't own them if, if we're being real right. the the way that relationship has been for the past few decades yeah. um yeah wow that spartacus Ooh. better have yo those this is what it i'm talking about different things yeah it needs to have a lot of different things, yeah, and, lot lot of different of things. Of... and and like ivan was saying i don't think they have the infrastructure to even compete with with xbox game pass because Neither. they're gonna have to build a pc launcher to even to even compete on the pc front and give us the same like level of accessibility that xbox game mm -hmm. pass gives us like this being able to play games anywhere playstation is not set up for that right now hey. and uh, or ever really, I'm, I'm, I'm really. Yeah, you know, yeah no i'm not trying to be well, facetious that, well that's the that's when you go that's and pay for reality. somebody else i mean they're already paying microsoft yeah. for their for their service to do what they're currently doing with the cloud and that isn't even a lot uh, and, right. you're, and what we're talking about is something that is totally like i'm not saying that fans don't want it but for years sony fans and i'm one of them have been begging begging playstation to make their consoles backwards compatible they don't even do that so it's just like, if they don't take advantage of certain things, like the fact that I can play SSX on my fucking Xbox, like, I'm sorry to be cursing and to be this person. It was, it's utterly mind blowing to me because yeah. I can't play that anywhere else. I was just talking about that game yesterday. Like, I wish Sony understood the, I get like, you want to focus on the now and the kids now and the gamers now, but a lot of us are still gaming and a yeah. lot of us, have kids that don't know a lot about gaming and they would prefer to like learn from their parents outside of just your Fortnites, your your call of duties and your apex and all those things there's more to gaming than surface level you know and i think it's our opportunity as uh seasoned gamers to teach these kids yeah this is what i used to play and yeah the difficulty is ridiculous that video that we posted on our socials about that little boy playing crash bandicoot those are the moments that we really yearn for this is why we have vga it's it's just what we want to do we want to pass it along so i feel like sony is just missing the mark and this is coming from me 
who loves I love Sony, I would ride for them, but they need to do something. They need to they need to fix it. Please. Yeah, yeah. and like um Nah, I just yo, know, there's there's just it's so it's too much. It's just too much. Um they're 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 going for the jugular with this one. They're telling mm-hmm. Sony, we here, we not playing games. Um I see Golden Bread in the chat saying they gonna keep Call of Duty games. No, they're not. Those Call of Duty games are going to Xbox, and if you wanna play them, you need to go get an Xbox or you need to get on PC and play it through Game Pass. But I promise you, bro, they are not paying seventy billion dollars so that right, those games the, can stay on PlayStation. Because, because I, I promise you, most of those people on PlayStation are gonna go and play Call of Duty. What do you think they're gonna do? Just stop playing Call of Duty? Where are they gonna go play? Oh, no. Where are they gonna get? Where are they gonna go scratch that itch? Nowhere. Nowhere. Yeah. I love Battlefield, but Battlefield and Call of Duty, and 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 as great as Halo is, and, and Halo's making this comeback. Those are completely different games. Like they're like different yeah. style games, pace and all that stuff. They they attract different kind of players. Same for mm-hmm. Apex and Fortnite and all that stuff. They have a crowd. That crowd's going over there to play Call of Duty. Same way the crowd who loves Skyrim and the other Elder Scroll games, they're gonna go play Xbox when that Elder Scroll Six comes out. Um, and if Starfield t- ends up being Skyrim in space, which is a you know whatever who knows um people will gravitate we, towards that and that's what they're that's what they're banking on they're willing to forego the millions of people who will buy it on playstation to get you to subscribe for 15 dollars a month right now try, Je- yeah, yo, yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price well it is today but today, that yeah. price going up soon that price going up travis, next year travis just said you leave more money on the table by not making it exclusive right. um, yeah you do but I also, I also could see if it was a timed exclusive. I can see them doing that because it was already pre-exist. I think that's, honestly, that's just no. them being courteous. Yeah. I don't know that they would do it, but that's the only way I could really they're gonna see be like, being they're gonna be like, They're going to be like, enjoy that war zone. Enjoy that war yeah. zone. That they're going to slowly, that they're going to slowly stop supporting. Watch. Yeah, that's they're going to the slowly only, stop supporting only, it. But that's the only way that I could see them being gen, like, just nice towards uh, PlayStation and being yeah. like, yeah, sure, yeah. we'll give it to you. Give us a uh, Final Fantasy VII remake uh, first before you decide to uh, jump on the bandwagon. All right, so now here's here's the other thing. A lot of people don't even feel like they're done. A lot of people are like, oh wow, they're wallin. No, Who else are they I gonna think buy? Gonna do something crazy, right? And because still they're no, they're only number three, still behind Sony and mm-hmm. Tencent. Who's just out there wilding? Yeah, um, buying everything. Yeah, buying, buying everything. everything. <laughs> um, do you think that this is eventually going to get into a position where, like, again, to my point about Golden Bread, yo, know, I'm telling you, Call of Duty, Game Pass only, day one. Um, but does something like that make Sony reconsider this idea of letting people play Game Pass on their PlayStation? And this is something that we talked about in a podcast episode way back, and I said. It wouldn't be too crazy to me because Xbox has 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 let go of this idea that they want to sell you a box. Everybody's always gonna make their own box, but that's because you kind of have to just always make your own box, right? Like it, it just is what it right. is. But they don't care if you play their games on PC. They don't care if you play them on your phone. They don't care if you play them on your microwave. As long as you play in their <laughs> games, that's what they care about. And so for Xbox. That's just a plus to them. They're like, oh, this is just another platform that people can play Xbox Game Pass. For Sony, it's where it comes in and it's just like, oh, wow, you know, how does this interfere with the money we're making and stuff like that? But now when something like this is interfering with the money you're making just completely and may may make people choose, this is the kind of thing that makes somebody choose another console over yours. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. the, the Call of Duty fans who still have PS4s are currently sitting in their house right now saying, huh, might have to get an Xbox, you know? And and that's a game changer uh, for PlayStation. So like, do they, do you think that they might pivot and do that? Do you think, or do you think that that's too far-fetched? Alyssa, you can start with Alyssa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... Go back and forth. I would love to think. I, I think. I think it's an open. I think that's the way that you presented it. It's very much open. I think they. It depends on what Spartacus is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, and what that entails, and what it what it brings, um, because 
and if it comes because if it doesn't i just think that if it doesn't happen they're gonna have to bend the knee some somehow some way and if it's them putting game pass on their services like on playstation i think first and foremost that sucks because you're paying for the xbox service while you're paying for your sony service um and it, that's just the reality of it but i also think it would probably in my opinion be more beneficial if game pass was the the one place we all go to to just play whatever game we want and you choose if you want to play on your playstation if you want to play on your uh your xbox your pc not going to throw nintendo in there because they they don't care but if at some point someday nintendo they that's where too. we go i, I was gonna like, say them yeah. too actually I would, I would just assume game pass be the place that we go they all take a portion of whatever is theirs and we just choose whatever console we want or whatever type of thing we want to your nintendo point the steam mm-hmm. deck is coming and you know what you yeah. can play on the steam deck xbox Everything. game pass okay. mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. and so that's changed that's going to change the mobile market like the handheld market mm-hmm. for sure like od uh, what about you, Evan? What do you think? And also, and, and to that point too, like you, somebody who owns five Switches. Mr. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo. Mr. Nintendo, Mr. Pokemon, everything. Yeah, I don't, it's hard for me. So I, I wanted to kind of pivot back to where we were talking about um, like Activision and the Call of Duty just being on a, like just exclusively for, for Microsoft. It makes sense. End of day, while we're, it's true. We don't necessarily need the box to we don't need we don't need the actual console itself to, to do anything but i mean it doesn't hurt for microsoft to, to, to put you know a few more dollars you know for every time that someone buys it because i i don't think we're ready yet truth be told i don't think we're ready yet for players to play on on mobile to play call of duty oh, yeah. on mobile no not at all it would be i would i don't I just it would be cool but i just don't think we're ready just for that so you're almost forced to buy a whole system like yeah i know you like call of duty you're gonna have to buy the system um would sony ever want to put game pass on 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 playstation that would be it's no, you know and, and this is this is what i was Go talking ahead. about with Alyssa. it's it's a it's a it's a rough spot between what you want to do and what you got to do and right. i know playstation don't want to do it but no, if no. but if you no. gotta do it like like with the square enix thing PlayStation doesn't want to spend all that money to buy Square Enix. There's a lot of money to throw at just, you know, purchasing purchasing a company that is already giving you their product exclusively. And you're just going to do this just to make sure that some Tessent or an Amazon or, or God forbid, a Microsoft comes in and just swoops them up. And now that thing is gone and you have nothing. So they don't want to do that, but they got to do that, you know? And so they're in a rough, they're in a rough spot. It's tough. Yeah, I'll, I'll it's, say what yeah. I'll say one thing. I was in a play, yeah, I was in a space today uh, that was getting hosted by some uh, PlayStation uh, and content creators, and yo, I thought I, I thought I attended a funeral. I swear, to, I swear, I thought I was at a funeral. I thought I was at a wake. I thought I that said. I thought yo, I thought someone's dog died. The the, the 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 it wasn't that they were sad, but like I'd never seen this like this Just stern. Feet. This like stern seriousness, like, like yo, they were they were they. Were, I heard somebody say. I remember somebody came up and, and was talking, and he was making some points in like defense of PlayStation, and how like no no no, this isn't all that bad, like et cetera et cetera. And the guy was like, look man, sometimes you just gotta face reality. Yo, I heard that. I fucking lost it. I fucking lost it. Uh, shout out to Would them. You- but yeah. that's how I was like, wow, gotta gotta face reality. That's where y'all are at. And I'm telling you again, the parallels from yesterday are insane. And also, I was watching kind of funny games yesterday, and they were reporting on uh, Phil Spencer talking about uh, Game Pass and how their competitors were gonna compete. And he said himself, yo, this is this is how you knew he had this tucked, bro. He had this shit tucked in the back pocket. He, he said, no, 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 we believe in Game Pass and that he believes our competitors are going to do the same. And yeah, he that was that, yo, yeah. that was yesterday that they that that was like reported like on news outlets and stuff like that. And then today this shit drops. If you are telling me that that isn't a guy on a mission who knows what where he's trying to be and what he needs to do to get there, you got Phil Spencer like messed up like that dude is not playing games. Uh, he, very much a Capricorn. He's he wild. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, he's like, <laughs> he was a, yo, hyper aware, of course. But he was like, yeah, I, um, know, I know how to move the market. But and that's what he's but doing. To, like, but yeah, but to like, true. but to set those things up that way, like those are domino effects. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, that's the truth. I, I feel like even even when we date it back to Xbox 360, like at, at every given moment, I feel like personally in the gaming industry, uh, Microsoft has for Sony at least to to do things that they would have just like been okay with like they've just been like no we can we chilling we cool we got this we selling all these consoles we selling all these games we cool and Xbox is like nah like we out here and they're like no 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 like like we get you out here but you're not out here and they're like no we're out here and we're we're doing this we're doing yeah. this and Sony sitting there like oh our Ooh. PS3 didn't take off oh shit okay um, we got the PS4 rolling. Yeah, we got lucky. Our console, our PS5 is moving, but uh, this Game Pass thing is really messing us up. Like, I haven't touched my, my PS5 in a few days. I'm not going to lie. So, oh! Um, <laughs> it's ever since Listen. I got my Xbox, it's just been <laughs> have games to play. Oh, I got really it's really not about, at the end of the day, I just want to make this clear because I own all, the, all three, like Switch, um, How does that feel now, by the way? That's the first for you ever because exactly. you never owned an Xbox. No, I, I only owned the original and that was it. Um, and I've never owned like current gen all together oh, okay. at the same time. Yeah, it's always been a Sony console and a Nintendo, but it, it feels weird. Like I have options, but I think it also feels good because I don't have to sit back and think like, oh, I want to, I have nothing to play. There's nothing to play. You know, I can just go on Game Pass or wherever to play whatever I want. So. Yeah, That's yeah Game Pass it. has a lot. Like there is a myriad yeah. of games. It's, it's like oh, Overcooked, perfect. We can play that <laughs> oh, yes. with some friends. We have this, perfect. Halo, have... Halo, yeah, Halo. Like we played Halo yesterday. Yeah, um, and I can play it on fun. my PC. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, again. Now <laughs> to to wrap things off, um, just to touch on like, the Bobby Kozak point again. Oh, it, yeah. it it eventually throughout the day it started coming out that. It, lo it looks like he's not going to be part of day-to-day -day businesses and stuff. He, he said himself, mm -hmm. they, when they need me. And I think that's, I think that's his way of saying, I need him. <laughs> I'm out the door. You know what it is. They're going to let yeah. me go. He said they don't uh, need me. Yeah, no, they needed him um, yesterday. That's it. So uh, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the wide sentiment across all of us is like, that's a great idea. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna start this off just so I can give you guys a base of maybe where to start. Because what, what from what I'm thinking is, when if you let him go, somebody's got to take over. You know what I mean? Like they can't just, oh, they can't just, uh, you know, leave the leave Activision without a without a, a leader. And so there's, I've, I'm watching. I've been watching a lot to listen to a lot of people talk about this today, and a lot of people are saying that it'd be a great opportunity for Sarah Bond to to take the helm of Activision Blizzard and, and sort of lead that and and uh, and I think that that would be incredible um, put a woman in the lead over there too mm -hmm. uh, and and someone who's has always been outspoken about the things that they're going that they're going through over there and stuff so what do y'all think about him finally getting out of there a year and a half almost from now which is far away but hopefully it happened hopefully it happened sooner than now I'm not even gonna lie to you but um, I mean, but let's for see. sure, it's not just him. Yeah, and it's not just him, and it's not just him. Not You're right. Him. It's not Everybody just him. who who sided with him is definitely out the door too. Uh, so yeah. that's like for sure. Yeah. Um. But no, elaborate further if you don't mind. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Uh. So I mean, for I mean, we've known this since July of 2021 when those uh those accusations started to come through. Mm -hmm. They have a whole walkout. This was a whole situation. Uh, in terms of optics not looking good in terms of like the output of these games not looking good um they're not doing anything with their titles like it's just yeah like it's not it's just it's just uh it's a mess of a situation that's going on over there so they're probably gonna do a complete sweep of all the executives and they're probably going to bring their own people that's usually how these <laughs> these acquisitions go um uh, i'm coming from personal experience as i got as i told y'all uh, it's just gonna happen like they're not gonna keep the people that are around uh because obviously x well phil spencer realistically right he has obviously he has an idea of like what's what's look forward to his his you know his um his his executives are, are people you know we have 
like one or two people of color. We have like more women now in the field. So at least in his team. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of that. They need to make a statement and to bring more women. Uh, it makes sense for having Sarah Bond to just take over as CEO to say, hey, we believe in these in your voices and we believe that we need change here. Mm -hmm. Um, and someone, especially with like her, her acumen, it makes sense, especially if so, someone from business development. Yeah. yeah. She's going to definitely rock through that. Yeah. Yeah. From my perspective, I feel that I feel the exact same way that Ivan just said, honestly. And I think that is like the most, like it is very strategic and it can probably feel to people looking on the outside that, you know, oh, of course you're going to put a woman, uh, in that position because that there was very much a lack thereof, uh, mm -hmm. respect towards women in general at that company um and i think at the end of the day that's what you have to do i personally believe because that shows that you actually care and it's not really about microsoft and the fact that they they acquired this at the end of the day i you know if this didn't even happen and the board of those people were actually genuine authentic people they should have saw that moment and been like this is our opportunity to flip this and make it something super positive and show more women um, in gaming. And, and you know what, it's not even about just women, it's about everyone, like queer, whoever you are, because uh, not everyone identifies as a woman and not every uh, person that does, you know, gets mistreated either. So whoever you are, I just feel like it was their moment to really show us like, yes, um, we want this woman here. The fact that she's a black woman, even better. It gives people like me more, courage and confidence to be in this industry and to know that like my voice is making a difference because I see someone that looks like me or looks like someone I know. Um, and honestly, I just really hope this does mean a little bit of downtime for a lot of those devs. Like I know we didn't really talk about it, but I just wanted to mention it. I've heard that like devs that work at like Treyarch, um, you know, the people who make Call of Duty, they really want to do different things. Uh, and or they had in the past, but they were like kind of forced their hand at just making Call of Duty games. So I just hope that they get the chance to create the games that they want to create at the end of the day and get to experience something outside of Call of Duty for a while. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic point because there are a lot of studios that were just like, hey, we need you to support Call of Duty. We need you to mm -hmm. all those good games you're making, like Vicarious Visions. Who is Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Crash Bandicoot, mm -hmm. Spyro? Um, they made a really great uh, Wolverine game back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great for them to get back into actually making video games. I'm actually really hoping that Call of Duty becomes an every other year game because yeah, of this. Same. And it doesn't become this fucking every year vehicle that needs to be made, just pumped out, just for the sake of pumping it out. Um, you might actually get good Call of Duty games, you know, like great stories. I know some people yeah. might disagree, some people who actually play those games, but... Yeah, obviously. When was the last... That's like, the... I, I feel like, like, people, I feel like people haven't the talked about them the way old Modern Warfare yeah. games were talked about. You know, like the 360 days mm -hmm. of Call of Duties. Um, but before we close it out and everything, mm -hmm. somebody in the chat asks if, if uh, you know, with this being the biggest video game merger of all time, do you think Congress, CES, would step in to prevent uh, a full merger? Like, you know, like if this is gonna have antitrust mm -hmm. implications. My quick answer is no, because Disney's been walling. Mm -hmm. um, and and if they, didn't, if they didn't stop them, then I don't know who they gonna stop. And mm -hmm. also Xbox is still only the third biggest publisher behind uh, Sony, who is the direct competitor. So if Sony's not too big for their own sake, then I don't, I don't think they're gonna do anything about Microsoft. I th I think to and to add on more for that it's right now it's a it's a matter the EU is very heavy on scrutiny especially when it comes to tech being bigger mm -hmm. so if they can finesse it to say well it's an entertainment acquisition then they should be fine because yeah. when Disney uh, did the acquisition of Fox I think they did it with like it was met with like fewer antitrust concerns mm -hmm. so they just have to kind of finagle it to say well I mean it is an entertainment company it's not necessarily technology even mm -hmm. though it is Microsoft it's so I mean, technology is used to make it yeah. no, it's, right there's no technologies used it is a game like they can probably be able to get through it with few antitrust concerns but i mean mm -hmm. it is uh it's actually honestly it's a very interesting good great question i mean yeah. it's a very great uh, uh it's a, such a great area it just depends how good your lawyer is yeah yeah 100 <laughs> really this is where the good lawyers yeah. get paid yeah. but that but that's such a great uh way to kind of start talking about like the monopolies we were talking about that but we never really spoke about like how now the only way for 
for, for Sony to get better is for them to start buying other companies. And that becomes a scary thing in terms of like monopolization. Yeah. Like whoever is the bigger mm-hmm. fish is going to win it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that's probably something for like another time, but uh, that's kind of where we're going to, yeah. you know, we're leading yeah. to that. Yeah. It just puts a lot of things into perspective, even down to uh, what Sony has acquired already. So it's not like, obviously, we're having this conversation because, like, this is bigger than anything that Sony's currently been acquiring over the last year. But um, talk about Crunchyroll, Funimation, we could talk about, uh, and those two being the main hubs of anime, and uh, for at least on, like, a level of, I can download the app and whatever, um, and those two things merging together, essentially, at some point let alone Evo, which we spoke about earlier. So I do agree as well that it's it's very much a gray area. There's ways to finagle it. And I feel like the dollar amount is what really uh, is the main point as to why people are looking at it as like a monopoly versus uh, the way that they're acquiring it and how these contracts and like stuff happen between each company. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I think out of all of them, we can probably look at Disney and think, okay, yeah, they, they kind of come off as a little bit of monopoly because of how many things they've acquired, but the dollar amount has been significantly less than what uh, Microsoft just blew on this whole acquisition. So yeah. I, I think I think it is, I agree, it, it's, a, it's a gray area. It's a gray area. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, and apparently... Like some people who deal with like antitrust are like, yeah, like it's really big, like relatively in gaming, but like it's really not that big, like in relatively, like in relativity to other things that have like gained a lot of traction, like mm-hmm. like T-Mobile Sprint and and some other like crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. um, um, but yeah, I mean, any other any other thoughts on this before we uh, close it out? No, I'm gonna go play my Xbox. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if uh, Ivan is streaming any Pokemon, I watch him play some Pokemon. Yeah, too. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I'm almost tempted to just play some some Microsoft, you know, some Xbox myself. But yeah, it'll definitely be <laughs> yeah. some some Pokemon related stuff. Yeah. What about you, Ivan? Anything else? Uh, no, no. I think we we kind of went through a lot of different topics here. I mean, went all the way from like trust to, to just monopolization. This is really good. I mean, we yeah. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen in the next few months. Yeah. yeah. And in the next few years, man, cuz like Yeah, really, yeah. Like I've been telling people like Xbox has been laying the foundation and I feel like they haven't even started building the house. Like they haven't started building the house. They just been laying the foundation. They, yeah. Phil Spencer has been showing up every day and he's been like No, mm. another layer. Put another layer. We need another layer. <laughs> And and they and I don't know. I just I'm wondering when they're gonna start building the house. I I thought it was gonna be Redfall. I hate to say this, Alyssa, but like suppose there's rumors that that might even get delayed, which sucks. Yeah, I've heard. Um, because there's no there's no promotion, there's no updates. I yeah. I assume when there's no updates on something that it, it will good. get delayed. Yeah. Um, that's why I said to you, Breath of the Wild two and like uh, God of War Ragnarok. Like I could see that happening as well if they don't update. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my point, but yeah, crazy. This is this is just crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks, Ivan, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for hanging you, out man. with us. Uh, appreciate the, the the invite. Yeah, no, you already know, man. Always. Uh, we're gonna be on a special episode of the podcast soon, but we can't talk about that yet. Uh, right. Um, be on the lookout for that, y'all, listeners, listeners on podcast services live and or YouTube, where you can find all the episodes of the safe point by the way just so you know mm-hmm. um and soon shorts and all that other stuff you know if you want bite size we'll give you bite size you know sometimes you don't want a meal yeah. sometimes you want a snack sometimes <laughs> you just want to get into your fridge and you know just get a little nibble you know a little nibble i feel that um all right uh let me close out yeah no you don't like that <laughs> i get you i feel you um bye right, y'all that was episode 59 wow of the yeah, safe point um i'm one of your hosts mondo aka chancleta mangu i'm joined per use by the lovely Alyssa rosa and we were joined today by the don himself the pokemon don ivan navis was you already know um you can catch him later if you're watching live you can catch him later tonight he'll be playing some stuff um and if you're on youtube watching this 
Go watch some of his Pokemon YouTube videos, right? Um, yeah. And if you listen to this on podcast services, get on YouTube and watch some of his stuff, right? And tune in, <laughs> and tune in live, and tune in live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at eight o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Follow um, him too. Just yeah. Because, follow him like, too. Follow him too. Know. Underscore N A A V I I Z. You already Z-L- know, right? Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. On that note, y'all have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, weekday, weekend, whenever it is that you're listening to this, watching this, and all that other good stuff. Um, but yeah, appreciate you listening. Leave us a review and all that good stuff. Y'all already know. And on that note, one. One. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? <laughs>